Hello everyone, I am Angurag from Locofy. In this video, we will see how we can create designs in Figma using the Locofy UI kit and convert it into pixel perfect code. Finally, we will add an authentication layer to it using Firebase. Let's get started. So, this will be the final output where this will be the home page and users can log in by clicking on the login button. Once the details have been filled over here, they can click sign up and they will be redirected to the dashboard. Now over here, dashboard will be only accessible to the login users and for the folks who have not logged in, whenever they try to visit dashboard, they will be redirected to the home page. We will be using Locofigo KI plugin for Adobe XD and Figma to convert our designs into production ready front end code. This is the design file that we will be working with and this was generated using the Locofy UI kit. As you can see, the UI kit provides us with a lot of components out of the box and each of these components use auto layout so you have a smooth experience in both designing them as well as converting them to responsive code using the Locofy AI plugin which we will be seeing in a minute. To open up the Locofy plugin, you can right click anywhere, then click on plugins, then choose Locofy. So you will notice that we can do quite a lot of things in the plugin. The main one is CAD layers, which is the most important feature of Locofy. We will come back to it in a minute. We also have a drag and drop pre built UI components. These components are great if you are starting a design from scratch and want to move fast. Let me explain what CAD layer does. So for our design tools, this is essentially a rectangle with some border radius. Similarly, this is also a rectangle but with a different border radius. But we know that this is a button and so is this. So CAD layers essentially allows us to convey this information to our machines as well. So using CAD layer, you can click on this particular element and you can CAD it as button. Since we are using the Locofy UI kit, all of these elements have the proper tags by default. However, if you are working with a new element, this is how the UI would look like if you are CADing something new. So let me uncag this first. As you can see, we have several CADs listed over here. Since this is a button, we can choose button. Then it will ask us if it belongs to a particular UI library. Uh, since this is a custom design button, we can select none. And now, we see these three options at the top. Using the properties, we can also add other attributes like auto focus disable as well as some advanced attributes. Using styling and layout, we can configure how the styling and layout will work for different breakpoints. As you can see, the default, we have 950 as well as 650 pixels of breakpoint. You can also create more by clicking over here and adding a new media query. You can also assign actions. So these actions will be triggered whenever a uh, click event has happened. So for example, if I click on change over here, you can see we have quite a few of these actions available. So for our logging, we want that whenever somebody will click on it, it should redirect us to the login page. So we should choose the change page action. Then you can add a URL slug, choose the page as well as configure if the page has to be opening in a new cab or not. Once you are done with all the changes, click done. You can also see the Oco tag with Loco AI feature which uses artificial intelligence to quickly scan your Figma files and suggest some tags based on it. At the very bottom, you can also see a preview and view code buttons. Using the preview button, you can quickly view a live responsive prototype of your Figma design. And this is actually generated via code. So this is not a static image. And this is also very responsive, as you can see. This responsiveness is applied by default to all Locofy UI kit components. Lastly, we have the view code button which will redirect us to the Locofy builder and sync our designs over there. Then we can export or deploy our code. Now that we have checked the preview, let's view our code in the Locofy builder. 
so we can click view code select the frames then we will click view code in builder we can ignore the recommendation right now this will sync the code to our builder and finally we can click over here so this has opened the local file builder for us over here we will be making the final adjustments and then we can deploy or export the code so starting from the left we have the different layers as you can see we also have a live preview of our app and at the bottom we can see the code that is generated by the plugin finally on the right we are able to also create components using components we can easily extend the code later on so for example we can see that in every one of these pages that the navigation bar is the same and therefore it makes sense for us to create a component and reuse it everywhere so to do that you can simply click on the header section then you can click on make component to create you can also add various value props as well as style props using the style props you can pass in different properties and this will create a different designs based on the different props that you have passed to it whereas the value props is useful for cards where you might want to change the author name the description image and so on now we have created the header section component we can also go to home page choose the header section and create a component over here as well so this will basically tell locofy that the component in both home page and dashboard are the same and can reuse the same code in both places finally now we will be exporting the code so you can click at the top right corner so we will be selecting the home page as the starting page you can also export components only but we won't be doing that finally we will be downloading this as a zip file so in a short period of time not only were we able to generate the code directly from our design files but the code is generated is also responsive and has support for components as well so i have opened the exported code in the visual studio over here you can see in the src folder we have folders for our components and pages so in components we have the header section that we created as a component and in our pages we have the dashboard page the home page as well as the logging page to run this project we first need to install the dependencies for this run npm i once the dependencies are installed we can run this project using npm run start now you can see we have the project over here so this is the home page this is the login page where we will be taking the user input and when somebody clicks on sign up they should be redirected to the dashboard and anybody who is going to the dashboard but is not logged in should be redirected to the home page so this is the flow of our authentication system now let's start implementing the firebase authentication the first thing that you need is to create a project in firebase for this you can quickly search firebase on google open the firebase website now you can go to the console and let's create a new project so i am going to name it firebase react authentication click on continue you can choose to have firebase analytics on now it will ask us to choose an account i'm choosing the default account now we can click on create project this should create the project for us
now that the project is created we can click on something new since we will be using the web we need to choose web however if you are on android or ios you can choose these two options so let us register our web app so we can call it firebase react So Firebase has provided us with helpful instructions on how to get started. So the first thing we need to do is install the Firebase package. So we can click over here. On our code editor, we can paste it. This helps us set up the Firebase SDK to handle location and analytics and other such services that are provided by Firebase. Since we are using React, we can also install another package that will help us with handling the authentications. So it's called React Firebase Hooks. It provides us with helpful hooks with which we can quickly check if the user has logged in or not or if there has been any error. Great, so this is also it's called. Now we will need to create a Firebase file over here which will score all our configurations so we can give it firebase.js now let's head back to our console we can copy this and we can paste click over here so this is the required configuration that firebase needs all of these are unique to our project and it tells firebase that we are the genuine owners of the project and this app should work fine with this particular configuration firebase provides us with a lot of functions out of the box to help us easily manage all the services that they offer so i will import some of the functions to handle authentication so we want our users to sign in uh, we also want them to create a new account and Lastly, we can also implement Cygog feature. So let us import the Cygog with email and password from Firebase org. We will also need two more imports. Lastly, we will need the get org function here as well. Now we can use these functions and write some code over here that we can easily import in all of the pages to handle authentication. We need the org instance of our app. So to do that, below our app, we can write constant org is equals to get org, which is this function, and we will be passing in the app. Now let's create a function to register a new user with email and password. So I will call it register with email and password. This will be an async function that will expect email and password. Uh, I will create an arrow function. Now over here we can use the create user with email and password function. So we can write scan scan address await create user with oops sorry create user with email and password. So the first argument it expects is the org instance. Then we need the email and password. The email and password will be passed over to this function as arguments. And the org instance uh, is present over here. Now we need to extract the user from this response. So we can press constant user, press dot user. 
we will also console logic so we can see the user finally we should wrap it in a try catch block over here i will log the error first let's also write an alert so that we can quickly see the error message so this is the first function that we will use so this function will be used to create a new user we also need another function for existing users to log in so i am going to name it again we will be passing in the email and password over here again we will use a try catch block and we will await so over here we will use this one which will be signing with email and password so the parameters that we are passing here is very similar to this one let me first console log the error next also having a lurk to show the error message finally we also need another function to handle sign out For this, we are using this sign out function from the Firebase out. Now that we have created these three functions, we need to export them. Now we also need to export the awk instance of our app that we have created over here because all the authentication related information will be present over here and we can pass this to our react firebase hooks object to it easily and seamlessly handle authentication for us so let me quickly export that as well now that our firebase got js file is properly configured we can open the firebase console again click on continue to console let me refresh the page so over here this is the firebase react app now we need to scroll down and click on authentication now we can click on get started so for this video we will be using email and password However, you can also implement other additional providers of authentication as well, such as Google and Facebook. Let us enable this. We go to our passwordless sign-in right now. So we can just enable this first option and click on save. Awesome. Now we have this completely set up and now we can jump into our React project and start using these functions that we have created so the first thing that we want to do is run the project so this is the project right now to handle authentication i will first go to the login page and make this area dynamic let's go to the login page So first, we will use the React Firebase hooks to check the, if the user has logged in or not. So for that, we will use the use or state. Now, as I stated before, we need to pass the awk instance as well. 
So using the use org stake, we can quickly check the authentication stake of our app. As you can see by passing in the org instance of our app, we get user login and error stages. So I will use a use effect over here. And we want this use effect function to run every time the user or login state change. So if the user has not logged in yet, we can simply return. However, if the user has logged in, we want them to be navigated to a different page. So for this, we already have this use navigate instance. So I want them to be navigated to the dashboard. So this is how we will be handling basic authentications. So if an already logging user visits the logging page, he won't be able to see the contents. Instead, he will be quickly redirected to the dashboard. Now if we scroll down, you can see that we have a sign up button over here. And whenever it is clicked, it redirects us to the dashboard. However, what we want it to do here is that it first has to check if the user has entered an email and password, check if the email and password are correct, and based on that, it should redirect the user. So, to do that, we first need to add values to our input field over here. So we will declare a few stake variables. The first will be the email. The default value will be a empty string. Now let's copy this for password as well. If we go back, we can see that we have another password field whenever user creates a new account he has to enter the password again both the password has to be same and only again will the sign up be successful so we will need to create another variable to score the second password awesome now that these variables are declared we can quickly map them to an input field so I can see that this input field handles email. So we can assign the email value to it. Add on change. So every time the input field is subjected, the value is subjected as well. Similarly, let me copy this. So this is the second password field and this is the first password field. So over here we want password. Here we want password as well. This is the second password field and over here we want password 2. And set password 2. So if we go back to the form, we can see that the current flow is for new users who have to create two passwords to confirm that they have not mistyped the password and then they can sign up. However, for our registered users, we go to one that. For our registered users, we just want an email address and a password. So to check if the user already has an account or not, we will use another variable. This will be a boolean value. Initially, it will be set to false. Now, this is the block of code that is generating this. So we can check. 
So if a registered user is true, that means that the user has clicked the login button. Then we want to display an alternative text. So I will copy that. Else we will display this default text. So over here we want to write. Now what we want to do is that whenever somebody will click on login, the registered user value should change. So we will add on click. And we will change the previous value. Similarly, we will add it over here as well. So now, if I click on it, you can see that this changes. Also, I go to our registered users to see this field. So we can go to this. And whenever the value of registered users is called false, we will render the head, else we will render the input field. So as you can see, for our new users, this will be the flow, and for our already registered users, they won't see the second input field. I also want to change the text over here. So we can quickly do similar thing that we get over here. So whenever registered users is not false, we can write login. Else we can write create account. Now finally we can work on the side up button. This function is triggered every time the button is clicked. So we will check if the registered user is present or not. If we have a registered user, we want to use the login with email and password function. And here we will pass the email and password. Else, if we have a new user, he or she has to enter the password twice. So we will first check if both the passwords are equal or not. If they are, we will use the register user with email and password function. And we will again pass in the data. So these are basically the functions that we have created over here. As you can see. Also, we don't want to use callback. So we want this to be a normal function. And it would also be nice if the passwords go match that we throw an error. So I will alert passwords go match. Now let's see this in action. Awesome. So now the user has been logged in, and that's why we were redirected to the dashboard. Now this is how we can handle authentication. Now we also want an option where we can sign out. So for this, we can go to the hacker section. And over here again, we will be using the aux cake. And also the aux Inkscape software app. So similar to what we did over here, we will be again using Oxcake to check if the user has been logging or not. So if the user is logging, we want it to display logout. We want to check if the user is present, we will display logout. Else will display logic. Also on the on click function, right now it's navigating to the login page. 
now let us go back to the home page and we can see that we have the logout stake here as well because they use the same component now if i go back to the login page you can see that i'm redirected to the dashboard so this is because on a login page we check if the user has already been authenticated we navigate them to dashboard however the dashboard has to be a protected route meaning that only the authenticated users should be able to see the page so over here again we will be accessing the different stages of authentication so here again i will be using use effect to check if the user is present or not if the user is not present we want it to navigate to our home page so let us revisit the page in incognito so right now we don't have a user otherwise this would say logout now if i visit the dashboard you can see that it is redirecting us to the home page however we can visit the login page because the user is not present right now so let me quickly create a new user so we can also log out as you can see we were also able to log out now if i use the same account again we will be able to log in again as well as you can see so everything works as expected so this is how we were able to convert our designs into production ready react code we also saw in this video that the code is highly extendable as with just a few lines of code we were able to add the authentication system thanks to firebase i hope you enjoyed this video and please comment down below what you are building and ship it faster with glocofy